And if you wanted to go back in, you could go back in and double up those lines. So of course, you know, they're great for folk. Hi everyone. My name is Paul Antonio. And I just wanted to talk to you about what a glass pen is and this craze that's sweeping writers and calligraphers. A glass pen, as you can see, has a bulb at the tip. And what happens there is the bulb is essentially <clears throat> a reservoir. And so the ink is held, so from, from face on, what you'll see is this. The ink is held inside of the bulb. The thing about the tip is, it's a small tip. And that usually means it's a monoline tip. And if it's a monoline tip, it will only produce <clears throat> a line of even thickness. Now, as you can see, I'm sort of rotating my pen around. I've had this pen for about 20 years. So it produces lines of even thicknesses. Now, of course, the problem is because the tip is made up of these little filaments. I don't know if you can, you can see as I, as I turn the pen, you can see these little notches. And so this, those are the open grooves. And those open grooves allow the ink to flow through. You can see it's coalescing at the base there. I'm just gonna zoom in just a little bit to help you out with that. So you can see that coalescing at the base. So I'm going to dip a little bit more ink and you can see that So I'm going to hold it back and lean forward and you see how the ink is starting to pool. So <clears throat> first thing is you have to be really careful with them because they have a tendency to drop ink on the page. Second thing is do not under any circumstance press on this nib because it will shatter. So the difference between a glass pen is you have this monoline tip and unlike a pointed flexible nib where you also have a fine point this can produce a thin line and it can produce with pressure a thick line or it can produce a swell stroke this pen cannot do that equally with a broad edge nib these can produce thin lines, they can produce thick lines, and they can produce thin and thick lines which bear relationship to, to each other. These cannot. <clears throat> now there are other types of glass pens, um, and as I'm, as I'm discussing this, this is a ruling pen. So I'm just going to adjust the flange there. And that allows me to get a thin line based on what the tool was originally used for. Or a, instead of going from a vertical angle, I'm now holding it flat so that the blades are um, lower. <clears throat> that gives me a thicker line. And uh, So ruling pens work in a slightly different way as well. But I'm just trying to show you how they compare to what a glass pen can do. Now, there, is, there are two types of glass pens. You have glass pens which are like this, or you have glass pens which are made with beautiful cages at the front so that they can hold the nib in place. This is a very different tool. In fact, this is not really a glass pen. It's essentially a glass pen staff. And what I've done is I've put a pointed flexible nib in there. That's a Zebra G nib. <clears throat> And as beautiful as this pen is, I must confess, it's a bit of a pain to use because these rigids are, are quite painful when you are holding the nib. So how do you actually, what would you actually use a glass pen for? Glass pens are beautiful objects. And if I was using a glass pen, <clears throat> I would probably only use it for fairly simplistic scripts. So for instance, uh, based on Spencerian script, we could use it for Palmer script. Oh, let's get some ink flowing. So 
So you see that the line doesn't vary in thickness. Uh, I have I, also used these in the past for my, um, my fairly upright italic script. So you have to be a little bit careful with the bar. There we go. Now, the problem is, as you can see, that the tool is, um, is sometimes writing and sometimes not writing. So you do need to keep them fairly clean because if the grooves get clogged up with ink, you sort of get yourself into a fairly difficult situation. So the other thing that I've just done is, instead of working upright, I'm holding it slightly lower. And <clears throat> so of course, a slightly thicker ink like gouache, if you if you mix up some gouache to write with, will clearly not work in this tool. It'll clog the tool. So obviously you need to use something like a fountain pen ink, like a Monteverde or Pelican 4001, or uh, maybe one of the manuscript fountain pen inks. So make sure they're fountain pen ink. I probably wouldn't try something like a Mont Blanc ink because their fountain pen inks tend to be thicker. Definitely not Winsor Newton calligraphy ink and certainly not Dr. P.H. Martin's bleed proof white because it will really clog this up. So just be careful with them. Remember, um, if you're running into issues with um, with ink flow, instead of holding it, instead of holding it more vertical, hold it on its side. One of the other things that I forgot to mention is this. Your glass pens do wear away. <clears throat> so my pen has a little tip but it's also worn a little bit on the side there and um, so you, you just need to look for that little bit so here we see the the inks flowing a little bit better now that i'm holding it a little bit flatter you can use them for doing slightly more contemporary versals so for instance You could even use them to hatch that space in, or you can use them to flood color back and forth. Well, like I said, they're a monoline tool, so that they're, they're great for writing monoline letters. And if you wanted to go back in, you could go back in and double up those lines. So of course, you know, they're great for full calligraphy, um, but uh, I would sort of, if you want to get some copper plate letters or some metallic letters, I, I would suggest just, you know, get, getting a broad edge nib or pointed pen. So I hope that helps. Uh, and uh, if you decide to get some, have some fun with them. Don't press too hard, check the paper, check the ink, um, and, uh, and don't break them, okay? <laughs> So I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Have a good day. Bye-bye.